Welcome back everybody to another episode of Automotive Drama. Uh, like always, I'll keep my preamble short. Likes are nice, subscribes are better. Comments, questions, please feel free. Um, I'm always up for it. Alright, now, I got this, and believe me, I thought everything I could to change the name of Toyota Camry into something stupid like Ford Non-Focus. I couldn't come up with anything. Somebody's got a good one for the Cami, please... Now, oh, the Toyota Cami. There we go. I just made one up. Anyways, this Camry is a really great car, and it's got a V6 that they slammed in here. and phew, They set the car on top of this motor. But the water pump. Now, I'm going to tell everybody right off the bat, and this is not for your lightly experienced mechanic. This thing's a real, uh, I'll be nice, and let everybody use their own words. But I just want to show you real first. Since you see I have the new pump installed, and you also see that that pulley is loose. First, you're going to be playing with this pulley to get all the bolts out. And there's like 15 of them. But if you'll notice how I put a mark on the pulley, those white dots, and there's a mark on the, on the uh, actual water pump itself. It's kind of hard to see, but do yourself a favor. When you got it off, make sure you do that. Um... It just makes it easier to get the bolts in because you're not getting that pulley out of there unless you take the pump with it. Now, that's what I wanted to kind of tell you. What did I do with that old pump? There it is. Also, you really can't get the gasket backwards on this thing. And if you do figure out that you do, you'll notice the slip on it. Well, that's to clear the impellers on the water pump. But let me get that out of the way first and make sure you put that in first. Otherwise, and when you go to clean this thing, don't run a digra or a cookie wheel across that that that's really you know it's super clean anyways maybe a piece of scotch bright and a razor blade but when you're putting this on you got to battle with the pulley and you're going to have to tuck it in there's a also there's a bracket back here that goes on the back head there's a bolt right there and a bolt right there this one was actually missing on this one. I'll have to figure that out when I put it back together. But uh, you got to take this off. It just clips around the top of the valve cover. You see, there's a little thing right there. And otherwise, you're never going to clear it. But I can't do both. But when you bring this thing in, you're going to have to tuck it in and move it to the side. And do yourself a favor lift the engine. I mean, uh, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you right there. Because. It just makes it much easier to, it, you just got so much clearance. It's really easy to do, there's a bolt there, or a nut there. Same thing on the tranny on the other side. And there's one bolt down here on the tranny mount, which you can see. I just got, can you see it down there? I just got it hanging there right now. It's actually holding the motor up a little bit for me. But that way you can wiggle around. Be careful back there, you don't want to smash anything. Um... And then you can actually wiggle <laughs> this thing in and out. And you're going to fight with that pulley, whether you want to or not, to get those bolts in and out. They're going to be moving it around. And you can see we, it, it was leaking. And this guy did it as a maintenance thing. He kept saying he would smell coolant once in a while. I'm not going to lie to you. I wish I could have got a mirror. I might have been able to get my thesoscope in there to see that. But this thing is buried. All right, now, when you're taking that pulley off to get the bolts out of the pulley, make sure you leave the belt on first and always write a diagram of the belt. And this belt is a real, don't pay attention to that little scribble line there because that one doesn't exist. The way this thing goes, the belt goes around the water pump pulley twice almost. It's really goofy and it's not easy to put on. We'll have another video on that later. Okay. You're going to have to take all the pulleys off, the idler pulleys. All right, that one goes down on the bottom. This one goes here. It's got this washer. Make sure you get that right because it does have a little lip on it. And it, it, it won't it'll rub, on the, rub the seal out of the bearing. That one's self-explanatory. Now, the tensioner pulley. Uh, if you try to tighten it and you can't get it loose because that's how you got to actually move it to uh, get the belt off it is left-handed thread so 
that's not lefty Lucy that's Lucy's lefty and she ain't tidy um now this thing which goes right here and I haven't put this on yet so I can give you a kind of an example um always I use marble mist oil and all my rubber before I do it and then I use my pick and try to get the marble mist oil underneath the the rubber hose so that they usually just slide right off blow if it's got an o-ring like that make sure you blow it out real good with air and again i i use you can use anything you want but i use good old-fashioned marble mist oil also when you're putting those water pump pull these bolts in any any bolt actually on aluminum like this i always use permatex anti-seize you guys if you don't want to that's up to you now that is behind that which you're gonna have to watch the other videos because it's to show you how to put that in I have to actually kind of put some of this together because it's like almost a, <laughs> that is like ridiculous to get out of there and I'll have to show you how to do that in another video but anyways thanks for tuning in to one of the episodes of the uh, the Castry I mean Camry uh, water pump deal and it is not a fun job labor guide says about four hours and a good experienced mechanic, even if he'd done this a few times, depending on how it went, it's going to take close to four hours. Um, make sure in that kit they give you that O-ring too. Make sure you change that. I like to use Permatex, um, what do they call it, high temperature, the red stuff. That's better than any of it. I know if everybody sees it, just wipe it off if there is any excess. And I always put them around the O-rings when I change the O-rings. One, it helps the O-ring slide on it. Two, It'll actually help seal on either side of the O-ring. I've done that on many plastic things like foreign cars, all the plastic hoses on these German cars and all that craziness. But anyways, thanks for tuning in again. Like always, likes are nice, scribes are better. Stay tuned for more episodes of the Toyota Castry, I mean Camry. Have a good night, folks.